I was reading an article this morning on W Magazine about fashion trends for 2024, and I was actually starting to freak out. Mini hems, which if you ask me, look microscopic. 90s nostalgia that looks like grunge is making a comeback. I was starting to hyperventilate, and then I saw business casual. Okay, I can deal with that. Butter bell in all butter colored yellow hues. Oh boy, oh boy. Denim dandy as in denim in all new ways. Film noir, which is kind of like, I don't know, a bit dark and gothic. I don't know. I was starting to freak out just a little bit because I was thinking, these are not trends that I even want to be a part of. What am I going to do? Well. When I really started to think about what I'm seeing as trends and what are buzzwords for sure on Instagram and social media, the words that we're hearing more often are these other trends that we're gonna talk about today that are way more classic and timeless and really will be styles that you can take throughout time and that you're not having to feel like they're not micro trends. I'm always thinking through, how do I spend my money well today so that I'll have items in my wardrobe that I will want tomorrow and next week and next month and next year and even for lots of years to come. So today, let's talk about those trends. First trend is classic modern. This is a term that I've kind of come up with to describe the style that I find myself leaning towards. I'm not sure that it's the most buzzy word. In fact, if you go to look it up, look up the hashtag, look up the hashtag modern classic because you're going to find a lot more that way if you're looking for more inspiration. But modern classic to me is about timeless shapes. It's about beautiful, like timeless classic silhouettes that have just a little bit of a modern twist to them. So they're not ultra traditional. There's something about them that just has a little bit of a twist to them. Brands that I look to for this style are Dior, Anina Bing, Prada, J. Crew, and other stories are really great sources for these. This style is really all about classic tops like the pussy bow top, a classic silk button down, a classic cotton button down, a classic Oxford, elegant trousers with beautiful pleats. These will come in all different materials depending on the seasons, but everything that you find in the style is gonna be a little bit more pared back, simple, but beautiful. When it comes to shoes, I think that this is a key aspect of the style as well. Classic modern shoes are a little bit of a challenge because you want something that feels timeless, yet it's not like stodgy feeling. <laughs> it's not kind of like super old fashioned either. So again, I do look to those brands. I think they do a really great job, but you're looking for clean lines, simple, and yet there's a sort of elegance and sophistication and just a little bit of a spark of interest to those shoes. When it comes to bags for this style, think classic, timeless. Are you getting that with a twist? I know, it's like all the words just fit no matter what you're gonna be looking at. Well, when it comes to bags, the bags that I think fit this style really well are the top handle bag. I think that the quilting, uh, quilted bags like the Dior, their Dior, the Dior quilting is just such a good example of that. I think that old icons with a new twist are really, really nice. The one thing you're not gonna find in this style is like overly grungy style. So when you think about the 90s, I think about preppy style from the 90s. I don't think about so much of the grunge. The grunge of the 90s really does not have a place in the classic modern style. Some of the preppy will have a place in this and some of it is just gonna look a little too old fashioned. There's gotta be that modern, that thing, that, that interest, that spark that just makes it just a little bit different from the way things have always been done. I'm so excited to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is Zuvi. One of the things that's helped me have healthier hair all year round is the Zuvi hair dryer. This is absolutely incredible. Their patented light technology is truly extraordinary. What makes this so unique is that using that patented light technology, it reduces frizz, it reduces breakage, it keeps your hair healthier, it also helps your scalp 
tremendously. The light technology means that there's less heat on your hair. They say it's a little bit like letting your hair air dry, going for a walk and letting it air dry, but just getting there a lot faster. I can't believe the difference that it makes. The amazing part about that light care technology is that it dries the surface of your hair, which means that it protects the hair moisture within the hair shaft. You're gonna have more internal moisture up to 109%, 38% shinier, 17% smoother, and 57% longer color retention. I like those stats. I don't know about you, but I think that it really is extraordinary. So they've got different attachments. I really love the style attachment because it really helps me to make sure that I'm styling specific areas of my hair at a time, but they also have the diffuser and the gentle hair attachment. So not only do I use this when I dry my hair, but I also use it in between with dry shampoo. This is one of my favorite hacks. It's been a viral hack that's been all over the internet and it really actually works. So I love to put this one on the care setting and it's the lowest setting and it actually blows cooler air. And all you have to do is just spritz your hair with some dry shampoo, get it up into the roots. I like to even pick my hair up and kind of get it underneath and a little bit under the scalp. And then using the care setting on this and a brush, what will happen is that that dry shampoo is gonna grab the excess oil out of your hair and then just blow it away basically. So it really does work whether you're gonna be drying your hair from wet or if you wanna give it a little bit of a touch up. So for me, the Zuvi hair dryer is just an all around win. I mean, even Allure. Allure gave it the best of beauty award winner. Time gave it a best inventions of 2022. Amazing technology. And I think that you're going to just absolutely love it. I've got the best deal of the year for you guys. So you guys can order it for yourself. And also this makes an amazing gift. I mean, oh. <laughs> Who would love to get this as a gift? It would be absolutely amazing. So if you click my link down below in the show notes and use my code Valentina5, that is gonna give you an extra 5% off of this of the 25% off Black Friday sales that they are already running. So thank you again to Zuby for uh, changing my hair and uh, also being today's video sponsor. Let's talk about old money because even though I hate that term. I think it's a little bit derogatory if you ask me. I find it to be a little bit offensive because people who are old money, as in money has been passed down from generation to generation, they come in all different shapes, sizes, and all different styles. I mean, just, it's so absurd to think that there's actually only one style for people who have money that comes through generationally. That's silly. But if you want to look this style up online and you type in old money, you're going to be able to find a ton of inspiration. So that's what I like is to be able to find some inspo and see what people are enjoying. And for this style, it is all about being it's all about elegance and grace and timelessness. It's all about well-tailored classics like jackets and coats and shirts and sweaters and trousers. I think of this style, if, you, if, if they asked me, <laughs> I personally feel like the words quiet elegance actually embody this style better than old money because it is an elevated style. It does look very chic and sophisticated, but there's also just this sort of quietness to it. It's not loud and in your face. And there's this elegance and grace to this style that I personally think that's why this style has become so in. Now we are seeing on the runway that 90s is making a comeback. I personally tried a little bit of grunginess, Converse and some of those kind. Oh, uh, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I think that this style is one that's absolutely just, it's so admirable and it's so inspiring and it's it's aspirational at times but i don't think we have to worry about being so specific that we get caught up in the fact that we'd need a horse and a barn and a mansion to go with this style don't worry about this because this style is very similar in many ways to classic modern it's more tied to tradition than modernness actually and this style really 
avoids holes in jeans. It's gonna avoid big logos. That's why I think Quiet Elegance really does sum this style up a lot more. Now, when you're shopping for specific pieces, this is to me where I get really excited. You might wanna look at brands like Prada, Hermes, Burberry, Ralph Lauren, of course, or Ralph Lauren, as people like to call him, <laughs> J. Crew, uh, Abercrombie, and one of my personal favorites is actually Brooks Brothers. They are one of the original retailers in the US. So they started their business in the early 1800s and they are iconic to the US and I just placed a big order with them. I'm so excited about it. Let me know if you're interested in seeing what I've ordered. I could share that with you guys here if you'd like. I really found myself drawn to the timelessness of those pieces because I'm getting frustrated. I just, just found, I found even for myself, just feeling, oh, I just found myself feeling a little bit frustrated actually. More recently with some of these oversized blazers and all this, uh, just all these trendy pieces and I've realized about myself that I just actually get so pumped and excited about buying something that I just that's a little bit more fitted has that timeless traditional feel to it and then I will mix it in a modern way for my own style but I do just think that this quiet luxury style is just it's just gonna keep exploding. It's gonna keep being popular. I think it's gonna be like, this is gonna be decade driven rather than just like an annual thing. Like we're not gonna see this for one year. It's gonna be something we'll be seeing for a really long time. Finally, let's talk about business casual. I thought that was really interesting that W Magazine put that in there because I don't know about you, but I feel like most people are becoming more and more casual. And I'm just like, I am just, I, some days I'm like, wouldn't it be nice to lay around in leggings all day? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I would like that. I would rather be dressed up. I dress the way I want to. So for me, I like getting dressed up. I wear business casual probably on most days. I think it's kind of funny though that a lot of people feel like wearing a pair of trousers means business. <laughs> like in Europe, it's just like a regular pair of pants. Like it doesn't mean that you're going to work. You People wear trousers just for every day like to go shopping and to run their errands. So for me, I find it a little bit funny that wearing a suit or tailored pieces like that, like that the only way to think of it would be business casual because I think you could you can wear trousers anywhere and I do. So maybe I'm just not on trend. Maybe I'm just waiting for 2024 to arrive, but I do think it is encouraging that we're hearing business casual. That means that maybe we will be doing business in something besides leggings. <laughs> I'm so sorry if that is you and that you really love that. It's just for me, I just, I wear leggings when I work out or if I'm gonna go for a walk or something like that, but I don't wear them for work. And for me, I just, I like getting up. I like getting dressed. I've always been like this. Even when I was a stay at home mom for a few years when my kids were younger, I still got up and got dressed. I, I just like that. So for me, I like business casual. You can let me know how you feel about it. I think it's nice for people to get, I've, I've always felt, my mom taught me this, that getting dressed for work was a sign of respect to other people and to yourself. You can let me know if you feel the same way, but I've had people show up for interviews in literally just completely grungy, dirty outfits. And I'm like, I don't feel like you really cared about this. Cause if you were going to see the president, would you have put in any more effort? I don't know. Not that I am on level with the president, but to me, it's a sign of respect of the position and the role and what you want from it. So I do think it's important. You can let me know if you agree or disagree, but if you're into the style, you're gonna be thrilled because we're gonna see a lot of suiting. So we're gonna see a lot of matching pieces. We're gonna see a lot of blazers and coats. You don't have to always coordinate both pieces. I like to buy suits because then I can mix and match them in my wardrobe, sometimes wear them together and then other times mix and match them with other things in my wardrobe but then when you want them together you've got the pieces so I do like that I've got a couple short suits the ones on the runway I was like oh I would never wear those and then I was like I wore a short suit earlier this year so I would wear short suits <laughs> I think it just depends on where I'm going whether that would be appropriate or not 
but I do think that that could be a really nice thing to see more of in the stores. I definitely think that we're gonna still be seeing boyfriend style. We're gonna still be seeing oversized looks. I think we're actually gonna see quite a mix. I, I think we're kind of going through a transitional period with styles and you're just gonna see quite a lot out there right now. Also mix in jeans to business casual. I personally always go for ones that do not have holes. When I worked in Copenhagen, I wore holes in my jeans and I never do that here in the US. It's funny because you know, people are wearing leggings to work and yet holes in the jeans is just too far. I don't know, I don't understand it. But uh, I do think that, you know, going for a pair of really nice tailored jeans, again, Brooks Brothers is a great source. Massimo Duty is another place that I like to look at their jeans. I try to go for some in a darker wash that don't have whiskering on them. These are really important things that will help you look like you made an effort, you pulled yourself together, you are taking yourself seriously and you respect the people around you. I think that these are the pieces that you should go for. Oh, I love, oh man, shoes and bags for this style. Oh, yes, I love it, I love it. Uh, the Prada Galleria bag is the one that I bought this year and I love that bag so, so much. I really feel like it just, Prada just embodies that idea of business and I don't know, like, I don't even wanna be a girl boss, I just wanna be a boss. <laughs> Just be a boss, right? Like whatever job you're in, just own it and show up for it. So have a bag. Uh, Michael Kors put out one that's really similar to that one. So you don't have to invest as much money into it if you don't want to. But I do think that Michael Kors does sell some great options. I think you need to avoid grungy bags. Like I have the Bottega Veneta, the, the Jody bag that's not really business casual. That just looks a little bit too casual. So that's a, a little bit sloppier look. I know, I was really living on the edge when I bought that one. <laughs> But I do think that going for a top handle, looking for a really nice tailored bag that just looks very put together, the satchels with the nice top handles with the bigger ones, the book tote by Dior could be an option. Although I personally have never bought that because I really prefer a shoulder bag that I can actually put over my shoulder. Cause if you're gonna be carrying your laptop or iPad, it can get heavy just to like carry it on your arm or like in your hand. That's just me, let me know what you think. Coach is another great source for bags um, that will really fit this style. If you're gonna be shopping for this style, check out places like Prada, Dior. I think that Eli Tahari, I have found so many beautiful pieces from Eli Tahari and it's a much lower range than the Dior and the Prada, but the quality is still gorgeous. Also check out Ralph Lauren. Mango at times can have some really nice pieces. Theory, Massimo Duty, and Brooks Brothers all can really get you stocked up for this style. So I will leave some links down below for you guys to check out. Also be sure to check out my LTK because over on my LTK, I give you a lot of suggestions for, of course, the home, but also for fashion. And I give you a lot of ideas of business casual outfits. I'm also getting more into old money, although I'm like, I'm not gonna ever call that. <laughs> I will never use that term for myself. I'm gonna call it quiet elegance. But you'll find a lot of inspiration over there and it's fun because you can get inspo, but you can shop it if there's a piece that you see. You're like, ah, oh, I wish I could get this piece that I'm kind of missing. Check it out, it's all over there. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know down in the comments which one of these you 100% identify with that you love. Let me know if there's any that you just totally hate. And also let me know if there's another trend that you think is either coming in or should be coming in in 2024. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.